All right. We're official. We'll yeah, we're official. We'll wait a few minutes for more people to pop in. All right. Ken in his pro photo and his long hair. Still got his COVID hair thing going. <laughs> Looks good. <laughs> Where's everybody located? Seattle. I'm from, I'm from Plainview, Long Island. Okay. Uh, Los Angeles. Minnesota here. Mm -hmm. Here comes Ian. And, and Ken, where are you? Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I am, uh, West Coast is the best way to put it. So I'm okay. from Seattle. San Francisco, LA, kind of all over. I'm a photo assistant, so just kind of oh, okay. chooses to hire me. I go out to them. <laughs> nice. Where are Lena? Okay. Did we lose our Lena? She's on, on her phone, so maybe she needs to reconnect. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I'll send her an email. Good morning, everyone. Hey, Joe. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So Joe's in Seattle. Ian's down in Palm Springs. Got a bunch of our regulars here. Oh, very nice. How did it go with Jeff doing us yesterday? Yeah. That was Monday. It was a really good conversation. Oh, sorry. Was, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Yeah, that's what none of us do. <laughs> there's there's yeah. a recording of that, but we talked about his history and about the conference and the changes and some of the things he's going through to get it going this year. Yeah, he's one of the best. And I got to say, Palm Springs Photo Festival is such an amazing event. I've been quite a few times, and uh, I think Jeff just does a fantastic job with it. Yeah, somehow you and him are scheduled for the same days this year. Oh, oh <laughs> In no. September. Oh, is he doing his online now? Or is he doing uh, Yeah, most of it's going to be online. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and somehow the, your, their dates over coincide with your dates. Ah. So I'm going to have to have two computers going, watching things on both of them, and <laughs> jumping in where I can. Let's <laughs> let Allison in. I haven't seen so many photographers this quiet in a decade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael was on last week with Jeff Shiwi and Greg Gorman and oh. Nick. That was a, that was a fun one. Was Greg one of the who were who were the first explorers? Greg, that's what I thought. Um, so Harry Benson, Barbara Bordnick, Sheila right. Metzner. Um, um, uh, Douglas Kirkland, um, oh, memory. Uh, Sarah, Sarah Moon, um, uh, la, 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 la. <laughs> was Heisler ever an explorer? Absolutely. He was. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he did the keynote my last year at WPPI, which was yeah, I remember that. Well, yeah. It was a he's, good up in, he's up in Syracuse. Yep. Yeah. He's yeah. teaching now, right? He's okay. teaching and he's living there. Yeah. One yeah, I want to get him on one of these shows. Yeah. Um, you got my list, right? Yeah, I haven't got a chance to look through it yet, but yes, I got the list of everyone to contact. Thank you so much. Hey, Veronica, you're muted if you want to say hi. Hey, everyone. Good to see you. Good to see Morning. you. Good morning. Good <laughs> morning. Veronica, how are you? Hey, I'm, I'm hanging in there. How about you? <laughs> same, same. Me too. Yeah, Dennis is here too. He says hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Yeah, I think we're probably on the verge of lockdown any minute now, right, in L.A.? Oh, uh, yeah. It's unfortunately, yes. I mean, they, they put a lot of rules in, was it, last week? And I think they're just going to, we're going to go back to lockdown here pretty soon. I wow. think so, yeah. The, today's news was we're uh, about to become the epicenter, so... Watch really? Out. But I'm walking down with a beautiful girl, so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, this is and I see David Blattner just joined us. David, if you want to say hi, you can unmute. David runs a Creative Pros and did a, just recently did an online conference, so he's got probably have some things to oh, nice. add to this. Hey, David. How hey there. This is David. I'm sorry, I'm still tr struggling with the camera here, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm only going to be able to join for a little while, but I wanted to sneak in quietly, oh. but John blew my cover. <laughs> <laughs> he does that, everyone. I, I do that. But yeah, you've, you've had experience running an online conference back in the early weeks of June. I'm curious how that went for you. It was, uh, it was terrific, actually. We, we've been doing a live event for a number of years. Well, let me see. I'm, I'm still, this technology, oh my <laughs> gosh. Um, let's see if we can get this. There you are. Here. Hey there. Um, we have been running a live event called Creative Pro Week for a number of years, uh, InDesign Conference and other live events before then. But this year, of course, everything came to a standstill and we uh, had, had to pivot quickly. So we shifted to a 100% uh, online event, first week of June, and we didn't know how it would go and it turned out to be a big success. We had over 800 people from uh, six continents. Uh, I was huge five and we basically it's interesting we took the entire conference and we replicated it online so we didn't try and simplify it well we did a little bit but very little simplification so it was five days long five simultaneous tracks all day it was it was a huge undertaking it felt like trying to scale everest for our first ever uh event so but it worked, it worked that's great. great congratulations uh having Putting, we're, we're in the process of putting one on. We just launched uh, our ticket sales on, on Monday. Great. I know exactly how it is. It is, it's really crazy to put together. And you're, there's one part kind of recreating the wheel almost and another part trying to stay true to what you've done in the past. And that's, it's, it's an interesting balancing act. Yeah, and Lisa Carney was part of that one. Oh, okay. Very yeah, cool. so I, I mean, I found it really interesting to watch because you had a better connection with the speaker. It was easier to see their images on the screen. And then you had a Q&A afterwards that was really personalized. That was one of the most surprising things to me. Uh, we did have a, a number of people. Part of Creative Pro Week is, a, is something we call Photoshop and Illustrator for designers. Uh, it's, we focus on the design market, not the photography market. But uh, Lisa Carney was there, Jesus Ramirez, uh, Dave Cross, a lot, of, a lot of folks that uh, oh, some people here might know. Uh, but as, uh, as John mentioned, it was surprising, probably the biggest surprise to me was the feedback we got that some people preferred the online event more than our live event, which people have been going to the live event for years saying, said, this is astonishing. It's so immediate. It's so uh, intimate, which really shocked me. Well, I haven't heard back from Arlene yet on email, so we, we lost her for a while, but oh, well, I have started to here. She, she's she's having, of course, she's she's having, moving up my closet. She's uh, having internet yeah, issues. Issues. I found let, me ask, so. let me ask a couple of questions about this. <laughs> that looks really uh, annoying. Yeah, Michael. The, the people that go to the live events, they have to get there somehow. If it's a five-day or even a two-day event, they have to find hotels and places to eat and everything else, plus the cost of getting into the live event. How did you figure out what to charge the online event? That's a great question. Um, so for our show, which is uh, the Porch of Masters, and we've done it the last three years in Phoenix, Arizona, ours is a boutique show, it's, and we cap the number of 500 um, and it's $1,800 to come to our show. Uh, this includes shooting in the shooting bays, and we've tr transformed our trade show into one part trade show, one part shooting bays. So it's really kind of a, it's an exclusive experience. Um, we don't have breakout classes. It's just one stage. We try to get like some of the best speakers in the industry to come. Um, and it, it's a four day event. Ours is, is, so when we launched our uh, online event, we decided to make this as affordable as possible for as many people that we could reach because knowing what's been going on in the photo industry since this started, um, that's where, I, so we decided to keep the uh, price 
uh, much more affordable. So it's one hundred forty nine dollars. Uh, Very for good. And then it's uh, two ninety nine for another. So it's a thirty day access for one forty nine, and then it's two ninety nine uh, to own all the content. So we want to. And did spot. you get did you get more people attending the online as opposed to live? Funny you say yes. So um, we've already sold eleven hundred tickets already. Very good. We're really excited about that. So yeah. Good question. Cool. Well, I'm going to get this thing started here. So I'm going to say hello and welcome to a special edition of my series of conversations. My name is John Cornicello and I'm going live on Mondays and Thursdays at 10 Pacific and 1 Eastern. However, today is a special Wednesday conversation with Arlene Evans and George Varanakis. Arlene is the content director for the photo group at Emerald Expositions, which includes Photo Plus, Range Finder, and WPPI. She also worked at Creative Live, where I first met her. George is president and co-founder of the Portrait Masters and also worked at Creative Live and Range Finder. So please welcome Arlene and George. Hello, everybody. Hi. Well, Hi. Let's start oh, with a little more background back. from each of you. I'm back. Yeah. So Arlene, give us a little more background and then I'll George and then we'll open it up and start talking. A <laughs> um, little more background. Um, well, I've worked for George and with George for many years, so... Uh, that's a big part of my background in the photo industry. Uh, I worked at WPPI as director from 2004 to 2012. Uh, and George and Creative Live sort of lured me away from there. And I went to Creative Live. And we had a great run for six years. I did. And, uh, but when things ended there, I got a job offer from WPPI again. <laughs> so I am back where nice. I started in the photo industry. So it's a little bit more responsibility, but um, yeah. And George. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah. Geez. Um, I started in the photo industry actually um, in 98 and I was a sales rep for Rangefinder in a now defunct magazine called photo lab management way back in the day. And I was a rep. I left uh, for a few years and came back in 2003. Um, Arlene, I believe you joined the party in 2004. And yep. I was there to 2012. And we had quite a run. It was WPPI took <laughs> off like a rocket ship. Uh, yep. Arlene had to put up with me every day with my crazy every day. I was bouncing off the walls. We, were, we had a blast. It was amazing. And then yeah. we went to uh, Creative Live and I think we even had more fun at Creative Live than we did at yeah. WPPI. <laughs> Uh, we did. Both were just we were fortunate to be on kind of rocket ships at the time, and uh, a lot of momentum that on on both on both the WPPI side and the Creative Live side, and we just we worked with amazing people, and I will always cherish those days. I learned so much um, in those years, both at WPPI and at Creative Live, and so now I am the uh, co-founder of Subrice Education and the Portrait Masters, and I've been here for the last four years. We started in 2016. And we have our own show, which is the Portrait Masters Conference. We started that in 2017. And we also have um, the Portrait Masters online store where you can find a variety of different uh, subjects. And then we have Subrice Education, which is an education membership platform. Great. So I can only imagine what you're all going through now with the whole COVID situation and the big shows you manage. What has the decision process been like? I mean, how... It's just... that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I think for us, you know, the crazy thing that happened, we were, we were 24 hours away from launching uh, registration, which was uh, on that Friday, I think. I think everything kind of happened on a Wednesday, which was maybe the 10th or 11th. And we were launching tickets, I think it was Friday the 13th. Um, <laughs> huh. So we decided to hold off and thank God we did. And we just kind of watched it. And then we started working with the hotel and just deciding that, you know, this is not the uh, direction we want to go. And we made that decision pretty early. And then we just started jumping in and trying to figure out what this will look like online and what an, off, an online conference would look like. So that was, but it's, it was a lot of negotiations with the hotel uh, and it took a long time to get, to get to this point. Yeah, Orlean, you've got a big show coming up or a couple of them. Right, uh, well with Photo Plus, which is supposed to go the third week of October, uh, right now, we are still talking with Javits. They are putting together uh, all the COVID rules and regulations that may apply uh, to any shows that are going to be there. But a lot of that's going to depend on what Governor Cuomo says 
about size of groups. We had 19,000 people last year. I, you know, I don't know how that is going to go over uh, from a government standpoint. Yeah. So we've been working, I mean, no matter what happens, we are going to have a virtual component to the show and we're working on that now. It'll be announced in August and WPPI, I am planning, it's March 7th through 11th, 2021. Um, I'm planning it as if it's going to go as a regular show at the Mirage. However, the Mirage is not open yet. So it's made it a little bit difficult because we have no idea what the parameters are going to be with them and also the city of Las Vegas as far as having a show. So there's a lot up in the air right yeah, now, I mean, but the whole world's like that. So yeah, just normal contingency plans. You need contingency plans for your contingency plans. Yeah. For those of the them. audience who are new here, this is an open conversation. Feel free to unmute and join in or to po post things into the chat if you have comments or questions about what we're talking about. Um, I've attended a few online Zoom events recently, such as David Blattner's um, Creative Pros, and I've actually enjoyed those quite a bit. There's a really a different connection uh, with the speakers, but I do miss the social part of it. Yeah. yeah I yeah. want to see all the I think attendees. that's the biggest friends. part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And George, I know you're dealing with that as well because you have such a tight knit group. But uh, coming off of WPPI this year, and ironically, everything fell apart the week after. I mean, I'm very, very grateful that we got the show in um, before everything started to happen. In fact, the day I got home was the first day they announced the deaths at the uh, assisted living place down the street for me here in. <laughs> outside of Seattle. Uh, and then it just, you know, snowballed from there. So we were really happy with the way the community developed and came back together because it had been a few years. And you hate to lose that kind of momentum. Um, and I think that as we get through this more and more, people are going to crave a sense of community again and being together. But they also don't want to get on an airplane and they don't necessarily want to get on public transportation. And I know people who won't even get into an Uber at this point. So uh, it's going to be really hard to coax people out um, for live events, I think, initially. Yeah, yeah. I would agree. Uh, what we did, when we decided to do the online conference this year, we're kind of going in a different direction on a, on a lot of different ways. Um, when we looked at it, we actually decided not to do kind of a Zoom webcam conference. Uh, we decided to kind of go, you know, production being our background, we're pre-shooting the entire conference. Um, we're doing these shootouts with, um, at Peter Hurley's studio with um, Canon and Profoto and they each have four instructors. They, they get 30 minutes to shoot one model, uh, pick a background and pick their lighting. So we're doing this in a little bit different way. Um, it's, it's, we will have Zoom. Uh, we will have a Zoom compatibil compatibility. Uh, what we're going to do is Zoom happy hours at the end of every night. So we'll have, nice. like, if you want to talk about lighting, great. We'll have a room for you. Um, we're going to have George's bar where we'll probably have <laughs> trivia and some virtual drink tickets to give away. But um, we're trying to bring that kind of networking into it as well. Where And the best way you can do it is really through Zoom. And it'll look something very similar to what yeah. we're doing right now. How about your silent disco? Yeah, and we're going to bring <laughs> silent disco via zoom um and we're doing a costume uh contest as well you so. are yes <laughs> we oh have, uh, we've got hosts and we're gonna have a dj here in the studio and uh, we're just gonna try to have fun because at the end of the day look there's gonna be three three days of a lot of amazing content from some incredible speakers that we have but we want to mix it up a little bit and have some fun doing it. And so I think through the Zoom rooms and, and some of the things that we're looking to do there, but also the silent disco, I think will be really fun and kind of break it up a little bit and just remind everybody to have a good time and, and try to stay connected as best we can. Mm -hmm. What about the trade show side of these conferences? That's Great always question. a big... So the trade show side for us on the online side, um, we created, we're going to have like just a completely different uh, trade show type of experience where we're going to have all the vendors are doing demo stages, demo mm -hmm. stage presentations, and those will live on a page where you'll be able to see all the different deals and all the demos from different um, vendors like Canon, Sony, Fuji, Profoto, 
They'll all have their own demos. You'll be able to watch them. They'll be pre-recorded. Um, and then we've got some amazing deals that uh, everybody will be able to kind of access through the trade show. So in every single one of the trade show um, participants, like Canon, Sony, everybody, they're going to have their own landing page with their own information and a player that's showing their uh, demo stage presentation as well. Nice. But, yeah. So well, the, the conferences I've wa been watching uh, online have all been pre-recorded, George, like uh, uh, Daniel and Davina Kudish had one, Audrey Bullard had one, and every everybody was pre-recorded and they just sort of aggregated all of the content. So um, I think it's, and they were shorter. I don't know how long your classes are going to be, but they were definitely a half an hour or less. Uh, and I don't know if that was just because they feel that that's the attention span that people Probably. might have, but I'm curious to see. <laughs> Ours <laughs> like are you. all an hour. They're an hour? Okay. Yeah. yeah. The shootout, uh, each, one, each one is 30 minutes. Um, so that's going to go on for a total of two hours, but all the classes mm -hmm. are, are an hour long. Let, let well, me interject it, something. Yes, Michael. Sure. I, I have been going to... Uh, these events, when, when New York State wasn't even a state yet. <laughs> I mean, uh, it was, remember, I, anybody remember IPOSA? Hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, oh, I certainly do. 10 in the uh, morning till 10 at night. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. In, the middle, in the middle of Manhattan. And um, to be honest with you, and I put on lots of shows, uh, not only with, I was, I was a Nikon school instructor, then I had my own studio, but I, I, I did uh, the Explorers of Light. I mean, I put on over 800 events uh, in, the, in, in 10 years. Um, it's boring. It is so friggin' boring, not only for somebody putting it on, because it's, it's the same old, same old, same old, but the people coming there, um, nothing's changed. And in order to drag people into something, you got to change. Um, I don't know what you're going to do. I, don't, I really don't know what you're going to do about... Uh, uh, Photo East or whatever it's called now. Photo Plus. Um, okay, Photo Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how far back I go. Um, <laughs> but I used to I used to do a lot of stuff with uh, with um, um, uh, the organization before it went to Emerald. You know, um, mm -hmm. the the online shows, I think, are where it's going to be in the tomorrow in the very near future people don't want to travel people don't want to go into hotel rooms people are just afraid of what's going on and i'm talking about for the the near future i'm talking about you know for the show that's coming up uh, in 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 um, october and then all the shows in las vegas you know the uh the dealers the quote unquote the dealer shows um nab and the like yeah, um, yeah. Uh, but the but the the, the the PP I don't know what it's called now, but the PP of A, uh, Professional Photographers of America, the port the portrait people, the the kidnappers, and and everything else. Um, I, I I think that in order to uh, convince people to come, whether it's online or at a place like the Javits Center, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, you really need to get some star headliners. And I think that the way around getting these people to have to come to the event to give a live lecture or a live talk is to do pre-recorded um, uh, 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 events with them in a studio or in their home. Let them give a talk in their home and, and peek and tweak it 
and then charge the money. Pay, first of all, you got to pay the photographer who's going to do it. That's most important. And then charge the people a decent, respectable amount of money to come and see it. Maybe do it streaming so that if somebody can't go to the event uh, at a particular time, they can always see it at two in the morning, naked, drinking a beer in their living room. <laughs> um, I don't know what the, I don't know what the um, uh, manufacturers are going to do because even though that's where the money is for these live events, the cost of putting those, those uh, boots together, the Canons and the Nikons and the Adobes and the whoever um, is enormous. And they have always complained for as long as I've been involved in this industry that it was just, it wasn't cost effective for them to do it, but they had to do it because the competition was there. Things are very strange and weird now because now even the vendors are having problems selling their equipment. I, I mean, look what happened to uh, recently Olympus. They're gone. Remember Kodak? Get gone. When I started as a photographer in this business, there were eight medium format camera manufacturers. I think what there's, there's four now, maybe three soon. Mm -hmm. So things are changing and it comes down to the money that is being spent to have to attend these um, shows. Something's got to change. If I can interject, I think that's what's going to make uh, George's event so popular is that his audience or their audience is already in tune to uh, online you know, classes and events. Um, I think the social aspect of it was a thing that really drew everybody to the one event and, you know, the ability to meet Sue and the other photographers. And, but I think, I think George and, and I think moving forward, those kind of events are going to be the norm. I think those, or at least for the next few years, just because they, they have their audience already in tune to, um, watching videos and and or online content and saving a ton of and saving a ton of money right. to be able to purchase equipment or to pay the mortgage or to buy food i mean this is tough times and they're they're not going to get better real quick i mean they're 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 predicting that we're headed for a huge recession coming up not what's happening now but coming up you know and if los if los angeles is shutting down you got to know that major cities around the country are also going to, I don't know what they're going to do about Florida. Florida is, forget it. <laughs> and, and people going into Vegas, uh, there's no money. Uh, I hate to be a bummer about it, but I, 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 I you know, but you know, um, um, but yeah, was, we're all living through it. Yeah. But, but you have to re we're living through it, but is, is the reality there? I mean, we're talking about events. How do you get people coming to an event? Oh, well, I think that's that, I think that's where I think that's where the online events will really take off and blossom, at least for the next year to two years. Yeah, I think you're. Yes. you're I think that'll be kind of the norm moving forward. But what do you do with all? What do you do with all the vendors? I'm not just talking about the the uh, the, the big ones. What do you do with all the you know like the uh, the album people and the and the and the the background people and you know the the material people and all the little tchotchkes that uh, that everybody uh, was trying to sell it at, or get rec recognized at, at at these shows. Yes. they're not going to they're not going to be able to afford to to do a presentation. And if if they do a presentation, let's see, should we put Nikon's or Canons up, or do we take the album vendor and put him up before Canon. Uh, but Michael, gonna... I think Mike, I think what we're seeing, I work oh. for Hanamula, the, the yeah. digital fine art paper. We've, um, we've partnered with, with different companies. Last year at Portrait Masters, we had a great um, uh, deal set up with Canon where 
We provided Canon with paper and they made prints for people. So, and we've done an online version of, of that with, with, Actually, we've, we've been doing some training events for Canon. We've been doing presentations with different organizations. So we've, we've had to adapt and we've adapted rather quickly. Um, so I, I, there's nothing that replicates that in-person camaraderie and that energy that you feel when you walk into Portrait Masters, but we're, we're, we're being successful in this, this realm. Okay, and, and hand, out, hand out N95 face mix to everybody that comes in and spray the, pl the place before they, they come in. I mean, that, that, we're asking kids, the head of this country is telling schools, you got to open up and bring your kids into a classroom. And teachers are saying, oh, wait a minute, what are we, an experiment? Now we're asking adults to come into a room and, and, and let's party and let's talk and the camaraderie that that needs to change. And if this isn't a wake up call to everybody uh, in this industry, it, it's they're going to they're going to find uh, things to be a sorry mess later on. Again, I hate to be a bummer, uh, but uh, but um, in line with what you're talking about, uh, Veronica, um, it, it's interesting to me that that Canon uh, is do, was doing a thing with, with hammer mill. Okay. Um, only because I know that Canon would just wants to get out of the paper business completely. Uh, well, but they want to sell printers because printers take ink. And, um, when you show the compatibility with third party fine art papers like Hanamula, it really, it demonstrates two things, the importance of printing, and the beauty of fine art papers and it, it it helps canon sell printers and it helps us sell paper it's it's called the gillette theory right <laughs> yes you know yes. give away give away the razor but but make them sell make, uh by the blades charge them for the by the blades um, yeah. Yep. Yeah, over in the chat, David Blatt has mentioned that a lot of the sponsors he's worked with have shown very little interest in virtual events I love them. Um, I, I personally like them. You know, we're doing some with up to 600 people when you factor in YouTube live. Most of the ones I'm doing are anywhere from 25 to 40. And, um, you know, it's kind of an organic approach. You've got the bigger approach, but it's a way to connect with people across the country. Um, and I'm sitting here in my dining room. I mean, it's, it's a little more challenging when I hold up, um, you know, when I, when I show people, oh, look at this beautiful paper. Oh, look at the surface. It's not the same, but I'm able to talk about the characteristics and talk about the applications. And I like to refer to the smaller ones as more conversations than presentations because it really does allow people to kind of jump right. in and ask questions and also talk about what they're working on. And the advantage from a manufacturer standpoint is that's generally more people than you're gonna get in a day at an event within a store or other places. So if you can do that once or twice a day, you're actually reaching out to considerably more people than you would on a normal event basis. Agreed, agreed. We've actually been uh, incredibly fortunate so far that we have not lost one sponsor that we had uh, that was going to be physically there uh, for our trade show. Everybody has made that transition over to the online uh, conference. So we're, we're pretty happy with everything so far. It's been great. But I can see that there is, there are some, there's some pushback because I, I don't think uh, a lot of the vendors and also show organizers have figured out how do we really uh, make sure the vendor experience and the user experience is a great one. We've come up with some ideas. We think they're going to work. Um, but it is, it's challenging right now in terms of how do you make sure that the vendors are getting the most out of what, whatever money they're um, giving you. And then also making it a really amazing user experience too, because a lot of the ones that I've been on, and some of them are outside the photo industry, but are very webcam based. And for us, we need something a little different this year. This year. If you, you think, think, if, if you, if think, you think, think that you, that you are, are going, going to please every vendor, vendor you, 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 you'll be waiting for Godot. Michael, I've been in this industry for a really long time. It's impossible 
no matter how many people you have. I, I, will, I always tell this story. Uh, we had 16,000 people at WPPI one year. <laughs> and I went up to an exhibitor and said, hey, how's everything going? And he complained about the lighting and his booth location, even though there were thousands of people in front of him. You're never going to please everybody. Yeah, but that's right. You know I'm going to die trying. So that's... <laughs> that's <laughs> It and is. unfortunately, you will. <laughs> but yeah. you know what? It, that's, but that's why people uh, feel good investing money in things that we do because we want to take care of all of our vendors all the time. Un until they run out of money. Until sure. they run out of money building those booths, going to shows, paying for their staff to come. I, I mean, it's on and on and on. And it's only when the 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 people in the accounting department say wait a minute you're used to this much money and now we have that much money left you got to sell product that's the that's the that's the, the problem that we're in all of us are in right now big time george hey, listen i used i loved when carol boss came to my house to show me what was going on with the Hammond Mule paper. I loved it. I mean, I've been dealing with cancer for 18 years. So I, I, I had to do a lot of things to adjust. But when Carol came to my home and, and showed me, I thought that was wonderful. That was terrific. That can't happen anymore. It can't. And I, I wouldn't expect anybody to physically come to my house. I can't even get my doctor to come to the house <laughs> like they used to when I was three. George, when you do your event and the pre-recorded vendor sessions are up, how do you allow for Q&A between the vendor and the attendees? Uh, we have a chat room. So people will be able to ask questions real time. Uh, as we will have a chat room on the uh, content side too. So we'll ha we're asking the speakers to be in the chat room so it's interactive, they'll answer questions. And then at the end of the day, we're gonna have a meet the speakers happy hour Zoom room just like this and you'll be able to interact with the speakers and ask them questions there too. So Davey Dave's asking in the chat about goodie bags of, you know, is there some way to mail things to people that are registered, of, you know, the cost of shipping and the like who we know is kind of impossible, but yeah. I mean, it's also a big part of the, the, the some of the shows. It is, um, we, and honestly, we looked at it, um, but we decided not to do it this year, uh, just because it, it is, it's not very cost effective. It's very expensive to ship, you know, every year we give away a water bottle and a t-shirt and a lot of other stuff. Uh, this year we just weren't able to do do that, keeping the price affordable for photographers. We are going to have it available in our store. So if you want to buy like a, we have Portrait Masters masks, we have Portrait <laughs> Masters bottles, we have Portrait Masters t-shirts. So that, that will be available to buy, but they're not included this year. A question for <laughs> George and um, Arlene is, you know, the interactivity is a huge part of this, right? From a user experience. Right. Being at a conference and being able to meet someone in the hallways is an experience like no other. So a chat room is pretty much the best that we have right now, but you can even see here in the podcast, we've got what, half of the people with a camera on, right? And hardly anyone in the chat room. So how, how do you best foster that, that intangible interaction without a chat room flying by with 1100 attendees all asking the same question? You know, what's the best way that you see, and not necessarily something you're implementing now, but down the road, how do we interact more organically as groups? Is it smaller chat rooms? Is it more video chats? Um, how do you create that experience outside of the speakers, outside of the vendors, the real user interaction, the networking? What, what do you guys see there um, as that going down the road? Matt, first of all, how are you? How are you I'm doing? Good, good to see you. you. <laughs> Um, that's a really great question. And it's one that we're trying to like navigate as we go, because again, this is a brand new world. Uh, I think you kind of touched on it, which the, which I think it's going to, um, evolve into kind of the bigger rooms, the chat room where you're asking stuff. And then it's going to like kind of break off into smaller groups like this, where maybe it's 20 to 30 people, maybe even less where you're talking about specific things. Like I want to talk about, pro photo lighting in, in this group kind of thing. And it'll kind of break off into that. That's where I think it's going to go. Um, but 
who knows? I mean, again, this is kind of a new world, the way we're going. Um, if I can just add something in, some of the events that we've done where they're smaller and maybe that's where these little, you know, secondary chats come into play. Um, I've, I've freely shared my email with people and, you know, there are sometimes six, eight, ten people that follow up after. So it's, it's a, we're keeping the conversation going in the days and weeks afterwards. So that's, that's been nice too. A quick aside to you, Veronica, did you ever get your postcard project going? Yeah, yeah. Actually, we had 60 people. I've, well, we did two. We did a, okay. the personal one, and um, we had about 60 people sign up. So this weekend, we're going to do another batch of postcards. And actually, people have been sending postcards back. And then we, we Hanamula did one with Pro Photo Supply in Portland. And we limited it to 50 spots and they, they filled quickly. So it's, um, it's, it has been a great way nice. to connect with friends and people in the photo community. Yeah, I've heard from a few vendors that do printers and papers and the like that they are actually busy right now during mm -hmm. this COVID season. People are going out and printing and buying printers and ink. Seems like the one area of the business that's going good. Here's the, here's uh, what, uh, uh, printer told me he said it's like christmas here because people are spending more time at home and they're looking around at, at blank walls and realizing well i have images i should print them and and hang them so um it's for for some segments it's been very busy yeah going on to the other side of technology david blattner had to leave but he left a question wondering what platforms people are using for creative pro week they used pathable which is using zoom are there other people using any other things? Uh, we are not. We are not. Uh, so for us, um, again, we're going down a different path. I didn't want this to be a Zoom type conference right. or a based conference. Uh, ours is all pre-shot. We're using the platform that we use Subrice Education on is our cool. platform. Yeah. Anyone else in the audience have questions or comments they want to add to this? I just thought about being able to get a bigger bang for your buck. You know, um, there are uh, about 125 trade schools and universities, colleges, that uh, teach photography. Um, and when I was doing the events with the, with the Explorers of Light, which was live, bring the photographer to I don't know, Penn State and have the local dealers uh, give them all uh, cards to hand out and just anybody around the area, including the general public, could come to the event. That was the deal that we made with, with the schools, whether the event was in the college itself or in a, a, a big meeting room in a hotel or a motel. That's not going to happen. But a better way of doing it in, in nowadays is to do an online event with every school that teaches photography within a region or, or, or printing. You know, how many, you know how many kids we're talking about? I shouldn't say kids. These are these are students that are paying big time money to go to these schools um, that are teaching uh, a photography. As a matter of fact, what I found out also is that every MBA must take a photography course because they are the MBAs are now in charge of uh, putting together a a PowerPoint uh, presentation, and they have to take their, they have to make their own images or rent them. So it's just more than it's more than just you know uh, um, you know art classes, photography classes. It's also now MBAs. Link them all together um, on on what a lot of the colleges now have is their own um, uh, uh, internet. Uh, uh, I don't and I don't know what it's called but uh, they're linked with, with their own internet kind of system. Make it part of a, um, 
make a part of a, a, a regional thing. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, welcome back, Arlene. <laughs> Arlene, did you leave us again? <laughs> Arlene, you're on mute. <laughs> Still muted. Okay. There you go. Now I'm good. Oh, thank you. We were saying all kinds of amazing things about you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you were. Donna Marie is posted in the chat. Over her medical career, she's attended many conferences. And the ideas of having breakout sessions worked really well as the needs of participants were so different. We would actually pre-plan what sessions we'd attend. And she likes the idea of having breakout online station on sessions for the photography conferences. That is a really good idea. That is a very, very good idea. Well, and I'm watching one today from Adobe and um, a, a creative, one of their creative conferences. And they have four different tracks over, you know, every day has four different tracks and they're all different. And then they offer you different options, you know, within those tracks. And that's, you know, you can do that when you're Adobe. Um, <laughs> I don't think that everybody can do that. And I don't think that the software in George, you've looked at a lot of the outside software companies as have I, who were trying to talk people into buying their products to produce their conferences, but uh, they, they don't necessarily have the options available right now. I think they're scrambling to try to keep up with how fast the technology is moving on this online conference software, but they don't have all those capabilities. And I think that, um, George, you're lucky that you were able to develop your own because it gives you more flexibility it, as far it, as what you want to do. We went through, like I said, I probably went through 10 to 12 different demos out there. Yeah. And they're just, like you said, I just, I don't think they're ready. They didn't really mm -hmm. realize that, you know, this was going to happen and they kind of got thrust in the spotlight. And just the ones I looked at were really clunky and I just didn't think uh, our audience wanted to be avatars, you know, go walking down <laughs> That kind of thing. That wasn't really what I thought the direction we wanted to go with. So I went with just what we were used to and what we've used in the past. Maybe someday and maybe next year. <laughs> Avatars. Well, but, but don't you think that time. working at Creative Live helped you develop those ideas because we worked in that kind of environment, even though we're not producers? Yeah. I mean, and we have a lot of our, basically our whole staff is creative. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> uh, I know it was like cold home week last year. Yeah, yeah it got, was. Got, we had something like 20 uh, ex creative livers at our show last year, which was so great. It was like a reunion. It was, so, yeah. got it was really fun. All the amazing people that we used to work with, which was fantastic. It was really fun. Yeah. But George, have you found that um, you have positive responses from the vendors because the barrier for entry at this point is low enough that they're willing to take a chance on yeah. the virtual experience? Yes, yes. And, I, and again, I think it goes back to that trust of things that we've done in the past. We've always tried to mm -hmm. take care of our vendors, make sure that they have a great time. But also on the other side, making sure that our attendees uh, are having a great time. And, and that was our biggest focus going into this is, okay, um, how do we make this different and uh, just a better experience, user experience and vendor experience uh, at the end of the day. And I think we've created something pretty cool. Again, we're, we're taking some chances on a couple of things, but I feel confident that we're going to, that uh, what we're going to do is, is going to work out. And going back to your original question, yes, a lot of the things that we kind of came up with back in the day still are relevant now. And <laughs> it's kind of crazy, you know, Yeah, it is. like seven or eight years ago and, and they still are, it still works today. So yeah. it's yeah. pretty amazing. It's pretty cool. it? Yeah. Bad, um, and everything that we did back then, it was, it was really a great experience. Yeah. And I think set us all up for the future of doing mm -hmm. things like this. And then the creative live thing, those were two, three day events at a time. And we're talking about keeping yeah. people's attention for an hour and a half here. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, that's true. We did have a few audience members fall asleep occasionally that, you know, in the live audience, they, after I, I, lunch. I did that once. <laughs> no, did you really? It was a software one. <laughs> Those it's are so tough to stay. 
<laughs> yeah, those are tough to <laughs> stay awake through. But, um, is, that's that's pretty tough. Eight hours. Yeah. Uh, and it was Studio B, which was pretty warm. Oh yeah. <laughs> Where everybody fell asleep. Yeah, but it was it was good. You have other yeah. questions, John, for us? I so don't right now. Do other people in the you. audience? What do people want to see in their trade shows? What do you, how do you hope to see things happen going forward? Other, everyone else here, John Sands, how are you doing? Doing good, John. Um, uh, I'm, well, for, I, I'm the rookie amongst all these giants standing here in the room. George, uh, I was there at, uh, at Creative Live in 2015. Uh, for your photo week and had an amazing experience oh, right. That's right. the yeah. entire yeah. week there uh, in Seattle and uh, it was a great experience both Studio A, Studio B and bouncing back and forth and stuff and I've gone on to other things now I got my own space and I'm I'm at the tip of Texas but I, I will say this these these virtual conferences are amazing in the sense that you can be anywhere in this country and connect with amazing minds <laughs> experiences and learn incredible things. I'm still plugged back into Creative Live myself and enjoying all your past work there and getting a lot from it. But um, uh, here in Texas, we've got something coming up called Texas School and they tried to hold yeah. it and they've been deferred and stuff. And they're struggling with the same stuff that you're experiencing there with uh, the upcoming Portrait Masters. Uh, thing as well. How do we do this? How do we pull people together and still connect and, and stuff? And I think uh, you hit the nail on the head uh, in a previous life. I did small group uh, learning uh, dynamic type stuff and we wouldn't let more than 14, 15 people be in a group in order to have real communication and connection and learning in that. When you get too many people in the room, then you get too many voices and then it, it turns back into a uh, uh, a moderator, a listener, instead of this collaborative type of learning environment that I think the goal and, and the, the power of these conferences in terms of these sidebars and, and separate things really uh, have value. And that was the fun stuff there at Creative Live too. Uh, I'm still friends with a lot of people there that we uh, sat in the audience and, and connected with. John is a good example of that. But um, uh, you're, it is a new industry and we, we need to be creative like we all are and come up with ways to have meaningful conversations, but also support the vendors and, uh, and, and allow them to do what they do, but still pay the bill. All of us pay the bills for what it is that we want to accomplish in this industry. Yeah. So Ken, a question for you, you're, you're traveling Seattle, Washington, uh, Seattle and San Francisco, LA. Are you driving? Are you flying? You know, how are you taking I care of things? I am. So I guess going back to the whole COVID situation yeah. and work, uh, I've been working for about a month now, uh, regularly on set kind of all over San Francisco here in Sacramento. And uh, it depends on where it is. Uh, mm -hmm. If it's in Seattle, I do fly. Um, but again, it's all kind of like safety and conscious of like, you know, treat the crew like family. You don't want to get anyone sick. So mm -hmm. I go, uh, and 95 mask um gloves uh wipe down my seat just kind of take all the precautions and all the clothes that i wear are more or less like just baggy kind of like really big clothes i mean i burn up in them but it's <laughs> if i'm in those virus isn't technically touching me for the most part and i just like take all that off when i get to like land in seattle per se mm -hmm. take it all off and just like throw them in a bag that i just like zip tie and do not touch until I find a washer. So I mean, yeah. like more or less clean. And then uh, I do COVID testing, like for myself, uh, just how cautious because I know I'm technically negative. I don't have any symptoms ever. But again, it's more steps to be cautious. Right, of. you have to treat yourself as if you are contagious. Yeah, even if you so, aren't, and then yeah. everyone else is. And I'll say hi to Sari com coming in from Israel yeah. there. Hi, Sarit. <laughs> well, that's the good thing about this, too. Last night at 10 o'clock, call me a nerd, I was watching um, a webinar out of Hong Kong on how to train your speakers to do a better job when they are teaching online. And, uh, but I was able to do that. It's just like Sarit's able to watch us from Israel. Um, it does open up potentially a, 
a larger market uh, that doesn't necessarily help your vendors because so many of them are U.S. based, mm -hmm. but uh, just creates, you learn from each other, obviously. So uh, it just creates a larger network for photographers to reach out to and to learn from. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, see, Allison posted that she has a wedding on Saturday with 300 people attending, oh, black clothing, baby. fully masked, and 100 degree temperatures for a 10 hour event. Wow. <laughs> Allison, I can't believe they didn't cancel it. She's already been in some, Texas has some crazy situations, and she's already been at a few events that have been a little nerve wracking, I know, but uh, that one. I can't believe she's she's doing it. Yeah, the bride's pushing forward, and and Allison's under contract. So. Oof. Uh, well, it, people need to make a living as well, but it's really. Um, I did a webinar a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things that was talked about was redoing your contracts as a photographer and adding in um, some clauses now that allow you to walk away from a situation if you don't feel it's. Um, a safe place for your own health. Mm -hmm. I don't think photographers normally have that kind of thing, but something new that's been coming up that, you know, gives you the out. Uh, if you walk into to a situation and nobody's wearing masks and uh, no one's following any kind of protocol that you can say, this is endangering me and you can walk away. I'm going to chime in on that is for productions that I've been on the last few uh few mm -hmm. rounds um everyone is definitely pushing producers and photographers are all pushing it's like if you're feeling any sickness do not show up to set uh we will figure out if we're i'm not 100 percent sure still if like compensation will be allocated to you even if you are feeling sick and decide just to not show up i know for the most part even beforehand is if you get sick you do not get paid because it it makes sense like you the photographer has to find someone else but i don't know if this covid um situation will allow for not hazard paid but like i can't show up do i still get paid so that's mm -hmm. a kind of new realm that i think a lot of people are working on yeah jb sally is saying 2010 we had the jerk clause and 2020 we have the covid clause <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny, that's pretty funny. <laughs> that is pretty funny well here's yeah, but it, 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 you know it's definitely worth having a, a, an attorney or um there are a lot of templates you can use out there just uh you know review what you have so that you can protect yourselves uh in, for future events because this isn't going to go away anytime soon and because every state is on, under a different set of restrictions and laws, uh, everybody needs to have addendums to their contracts that will protect them along the way based on what's going on in their mm -hmm. state. Okay, well, I want to thank everyone for attending today, a special Wednesday, make time for us and get in here and find the URL and all that fun stuff. I'm uh, having my normal meeting tomorrow, the conversation's going to be with Karina Alavecchios on um, fine art portraiture and coming up on the 30th Lee Varis is going to talk about Photoshop and August 10th is going to be Jack Resnicki on copyright and got a few other things that I'm working to fill in between now and then so keep watching and stay safe out there and thank everyone for coming any last word from you George uh, John thank you for having me on sure. this was great and uh, it's also great to be on what, with one of my favorite people in the whole world who's Arlene um, <laughs> Also one of the most Thank you, George. And uh, it's always great. We've never done anything like this, so it was really fun. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, it. it was. It was very fun. Thanks, John, for bringing us together virtually like this. Yeah, and, uh, yeah it's great that we, Arlene and I became friends because, I mean, the first time I met Arlene was in Vegas. I walked up to her and said, hi, I'm John from Creative Live. And she said, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. That's true. I did because that's, George had just started at Creative Live. And... Uh, <laughs> I felt like he had been stolen away. So I took it out on John. I apologize, John. <laughs> that was, that was fun. I'll always have that story. Yeah, 2012. Yeah.
we were already planning to to bring her to Creative Live, and that's <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. Very well, good. thanks again, John. This was really yeah, fun. You, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Really thanks. great seeing everybody. Hey. Take care. Be well. Take care. Stay safe, everybody. Thank Take you, care, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Stop the recording.